Welcome back, everybody. This is our Algebra 2 Exponential Functions, Lesson 5, The Method of Common Basis Homework Review, Part 3. Please make sure you catch Parts 1 and 2, where we are solving equations and other things using our, our basic common base method. So for number 5, we have the exponential function y equals 1 over 25 raised to x minus 2 over 5 minus 10. And this kind of sketch here, graphed along the, with a horizontal line of y equals 115. The intersection point is going to be a comma 1, 115. Use the method common basis to find the value of a and show your work. So we're going to, not based upon our graph in this case, but you know, here's what we'll do. We're very similar to what we did before. We're going to solve the system of equations. Since you're, they're both equal to y, y is equal to 115, as well as 1 over, 1, 1 over 25 raised x minus 2 over 5 minus 10, we will have 1 over 25 raised x minus 2 over 5 minus 10 and set that equal to 115. We're going to add 10 to both sides to solve the equation. And we're going to get here 1 over 25 raised x minus 2 over 5 is equal to 125. Now, we had mentioned this case that when we have a fraction as a base, especially with 1 as a numerator, uh, it's usually a negative exponent. So we have 25 to negative 1. Well, 25 to negative 1, so 1 over 25 equals 25 to negative 1 power. But the base between 25 and 125, <clears throat> the common base between them would be 5. So we will find in this case 25 to negative 1 can be expressed as 5 squared, because that's 25 raised to negative 1. Or in this case, 5 to negative 2. So this would be 5 to negative 2 raised to the x minus 2 over 5. On the right side, 125 is 5 to the third. So we'll change to 5, over, 5 to the third power. Now we'll use our, our power rule, and we raise the power of the power rule, multiply exponents. So we find in this case, we're going to get 5 to the negative 2 plus negative 2x plus 4 over 5, because you're multiplying negative 2 with a numerator of x minus 2, is equal to 5 to the third power. And now the bases are equal to each other we can set the exponents equal to each other. So we're going to get, in this case, negative 2x plus 4 over 5 is equal to 3. And I like this 3 over 1. OK, so we have worked so hard to, to define the common base between these two parts. And then, of course, we were able to now uh, modify the exponents so they're equivalent values and so we set the exponents equal to each other. So let's solve for this. A little space here. All right. So we can cross multiply, and we're going to get we're going to get in this case one times negative two x plus four is equal to three times five, or negative two x plus four is equal to fifteen. We're going to subtract four on both sides. We'll get negative two x is equal to eleven. Divide both sides by negative 2. x is equal to, well, 11 over 2 is 5.5. So this would be negative 5.5 as our final answer for x, or in this case, a. So the coordinate that the two points will connect at will be negative 5.5, comma, 115. So our a value really is going to be negative 5.5, or 11 over 5. And I'll make this full page so you guys can see this here. Number six, the method of common basis works because exponential functions are one to one. For example, if the outputs are the same, then the inputs must also be the same. 
This is what allows us to say that 2 to the x equals 2 to the third. Then x must be equal to 3. But it doesn't always work out so easily. If x squared equals 5 squared, can we say that x must be 5? Could it be anything else? Why does it not work out as easy as the exponential case? Well, there is another number, if x squared equals 5 squared, that x could possibly be. Now, just to make sure, 5 squared is definitely 25, right? And yes, 5 times 5 is equal to 25. But the idea in this case is that there's another number that squared equals 25. Negative 5 times negative 5. And so, so here, that's also equal to 25. Now, why is this not work out, but in the other case, it does? Well, the idea of a one-to-one -one function we mentioned before is that for each x value, there's only one y value. And each y value is only one x value. We had this idea of what's called the horizontal line test. That if you, if for a graph, you draw a horizontal line anywhere on the graph, and you hit at most one point on the on on the graph then it must be one to one or in this case that each x value has only one y value and each y value has only one x value however x squared when we sketch a graph of this does not pass that test so the horizontal line test shows that we will have more than one possible situation and so the idea is that x squared is not a one-to-one -one function. So that was one of the things I mentioned before. One-to-one -one means that each x has only one y value, and each y value has only one x value. So x squared is not a one-to-one -one function, meaning although each x value has only one y value, not each y value has only one x value. So, so for the function, oops, sorry. For the function f of x equals x squared, and I'm going to just make that squared, sorry, it's not x times 2, so you'll see some of the things that I do here. Here we go. Okay. Although now i got to turn it off, <laughs> so I should have just keep typing now, but okay. So the function like, uh, f of x is x squared is not 1 to 1. One to one, All right? Each x value does have only one y value, but each y value does not have only one x value. And so why is that important? Well, it is important for us because of the fact that if we're going back the other way, okay, if we're going back the other way, we'll find that there's more than one possibility. So we can't necessarily use the same idea, okay? The, the other thing about one-to-one -one functions is that when we talk about the, to find, uh, talking about the, whether or not it's one-to-one, -one, we're taking its inverse. And in, in previous discussions, we talked about how the inverse is really the graph of the function reflected over the line y equals x. And so if we were to sketch this in blue, blue would represent the, the, the inverse of the function uh, f of x equals x squared. And of course, if we apply the vertical line test for the inverse, it wouldn't be a function. So a couple of things to take in mind is that the that for x squared, x squared not being one-to-one, -one, not having uh, the inverse being a function, makes it so that we cannot apply this rule of going backwards and forwards. Okay, so that's the reason why. So yes, if we have an exponential function, an exponential function is going to be a function that, for the most part, is one to one. That it's not going. That's inverse will also be a function. The quadratic function in this situation is not going to be a one to one function, and therefore its inverse will not be a function. And therefore, there could be more than one possible answer for x, especially in this situation here, which we've shown. Okay. All right. So I hope that's helpful to understand.
that we can use this idea of the common basis and solving for solving for the variable if the variable is exponent because the exponential function is one to one. We cannot use this, the same concept for an for a quadratic function because or any function that is not one to one. Meaning, yes, we can plug inputs to get outputs, but we can plug outputs to get inputs, though. So it wouldn't work not that mess way, you know, to get you one unique input. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our Algebra 2 Exponential Functions, Lesson 5, The Method of Common Basis Homework Review, Part 3. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was uh, helped explain a number of things for you guys, and uh, I hope that uh, you uh, had a lot of your answers, your questions answered. And um, I appreciate if you give a, this video a like if you did so, and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Make sure you get the notifications, turn on notifications to get no notified when new videos are added to the channel. And of course, please leave comments or questions in the comment section below. And I would love to hear from you guys and whether or not you know how things like improve the channel or maybe explain things a little more. In any case, ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Take care.